Lena in here. Hold on a second. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Oh, I'm going to mute you really quick. Okay, that's screen. fine. Um, oh. Pronouns real quick. Oh, uh, she, they. Alrighty. Excellent, excellent. Let me just... Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Get this audio f smoothed out just a tiny bit. Make this look all nice. Excellent. All right, Lena. I am very happy to have you on. Uh, so it has been said that you are the, 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 you were the spark. You were the, the, the spark, the shot heard around the world, the spark that lit the powder keg about um, X extremists being allowed in the left or something along those lines. Um, Twitter discourse is madness, but yeah, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm excited to get to talk to you about it. So um, spoon spoon. why don't you give us the, um, give us the take. Yeah. Give us, um, give us the take okay. that started it all and, so, and what happened and tell us your side of it. And then I'll, before I do my own takes and stuff. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you for having me on. I Absolutely. tried to get on Zan, but you went to talk to me and I'm like, eh, I'll just try something. But um, I've never been on a stream before, so I'm a little nervous, so sorry if I stumble or whatever. Don't be nervous. You're but, um, all good. So basically what happened was it was a random tweet that I replied to, right? And it was talking about how you're stupid as a teenager and you should forgive yourself, right? Uh -huh. And, you know, I just post like, hey, I used to be a Nazi and I, I'm much better now. And, you know, I put a little smiley face because I'm happy and proud of myself for not being in that anymore, right? So I posted that without thinking about anything mm -hmm. because i'm just like it's just i'm replying to a tweet nobody right. ever sees what i tweet because i have or so you followers. think Say, yeah yeah risk. exactly that's the risk yeah Look, anything you tweet on twitter a little can, bit go li there. can go viral mm -hmm. why the yeah I heard, I heard you say that on the panel and mm -hmm. i'm like yeah she's yep. right <laughs> yep you have so to be anyways, very careful on so, that side yep you, so i start you know getting replies and quote retweets and stuff and i'm like whatever it's fine um and, you know, I'm starting to get, like, death threats and things like that. And people are like, oh, what? What the hell? You know? So then I, you know, I clarified down below. I'm like, hey, I was a minor. I was groomed into it. I was 15, 16 years old when I was dating this, my ex-boyfriend. Um, and he got pulled into it before I did, obviously. And he started getting groomed on it. And then he involved me in the circles and I started getting groomed in on it. And it was like... I was already socially ostracized because I was raised conservative by my parents and I mm -hmm. was a real diehard conservative. Like I was anti-feminist. I wore like feminism is cancer shirt to school and stuff like that. And it was cringe. Yeah. But like then I started getting pulled into the alt-right circles and I was never like overtly racist when I was younger, mm -hmm. like until I started getting pulled into those circles and it was just like, it, it's, I don't know. It's just something different. It's it's crazy thinking about it in the past. So I just got shoved into this pipeline and, you know, you start consuming alt-right content. You start talking to alt-right people. And especially when you're socially ostracized and already kind of left out of normal groups, it's like so easy to just fall into it. Yeah. And I, I was there for, for maybe two years. Um, I don't really remember how long it was. I broke up with my ex-boyfriend in like October of 2018 and then I slowly started to get away from the alt-right Nazi circles. And then yeah. I slowly just became a conservative. And then um, when COVID hit, my best friend, which I think he's tuned in right now, actually, he started arguing with me and challenging my views. Because before, Wonderful. it would be on like public forums where it's like, haha, stupid liberal, you don't even know what we're talking about. You know? Yeah. And it's... And he sort of being good faith to me and challenging my views and be like, hey, you know, maybe you're not right. Like, you got to think about these things. And then he started sending me Vosh videos. And let me tell you, when Vosh retweeted me, it was like crazy. Like, my mind was blown. Like, Vosh is probably one of the most important people to me because of oh. how instrumental he was in pushing me out of the alt-right. Yeah. Like, so yeah. important. And I'm in this community. And I'm pretty active there. And a lot of people pinged me when the whole drama was starting to go down. They're like hey, is that you? Is it really you, Lena? I'm like, yes, it's me. Yes, everybody's telling me I deserve to die. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But like, well, I'm glad uh, you got COVID... out of it. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, it was like specifically COVID was started, what started me to think about, wait, maybe the, the right isn't right about everything because mm -hmm. I'm a pretty science-based person. Yeah. I try to be logical about things I think most people do. But like with COVID, you know, 
pandemic was coming and I kind of saw that it was going to get as bad as it has been and people are dying. And when the right's like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, we're going to protest and do all this stuff against literal science. I was like, seriously, like, you don't trust like doctors. Mm -hmm. It's like, whatever. And then um, um, George Floyd was murdered. And I remember that was like a really big turning point because I attended a uh, Black Lives Matter protest in my city, which was completely um, peaceful and stuff like that. Right. I was kind of like a liberal at that point. I wasn't a leftist. Yeah. But then shortly after, um, Bosch was, you know, talking about socialism. And I'm like, hey, that makes sense. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I call myself a libertarian socialist, similar to, excuse me, similar to Bosch, mm-hmm. um, just because I don't feel like I've read enough theory, which doesn't super interest me anyway. Um, or I don't feel like I'm well versed enough on leftist issues to be like, well, I'm a anarcho syndicalist or syndicalist or a ML or whatever. Uh, I personally so I just don't call think myself... those things are very important. Yeah, I just call myself a libertarian socialist. I fight for trans rights. I fight for Black Lives Matter. I fight against capitalism. Like, and I think the most frustrating part for me is that people have been telling me, and I know it's Twitter, and people are gonna say whatever they want. They're gonna pour their feelings out but people are telling me that i literally should have died because of opinions that were groomed into me as a minor well twitter and people are very very stupid and um the thing that happens on twitter is it is a it is like twitter is self-selecting for the worst opinions in a lot of ways because uh, most people who see your post are going to go oh that's good and then they're going to go on but the worst the mm-hmm. horrible people are just going to be like it, it it's like i hate to sound like like trump with the silent majority or whatever but it is kind of like that on twitter if you see something sort of positive you're just kind of like hey like and move on whereas people who are st- if you're super pissed off by something or if you're like really fixated on this sort of hate hate shit then uh then people are going to jump on that and they'll make a comment and it it is annoying and and horrible um yeah it's kind of like facebook <laughs> facebook yeah. the same way i mean facebook has some problems there's a couple of, like I said on the panel, there's a couple of unique structures. There's a, there's a couple of unique mechanical features. I don't know if me- mechanical is the right word. I guess mechanical is the right word in this case. But there's a couple of features and design decisions in Twitter that make it uniquely bad in comparison even to something like Facebook. Um, but, yeah, it's... a. Uh, yeah, it's it it can be pretty bad, and and the amount of harassment that goes on on Twitter is pretty horrible. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I've been the subject of that. Uh, spent like half the month last month getting um, you know, brigaded by uh, another community that hates my guts, and it's very annoying. It makes it not usable, um, and it's also very stressful. Um, but you also got to remember, like, unfortunately, Twitter is not, uh, it is not really a place for community there isn't community there it is a public bulletin board that any tweet that you post anything that you say could become viral overnight and you could find yourself with ten thousand followers none of which can be even monetized so you can't even make a career out of it it's just Mm -hmm. bad yeah what's really funny actually is i've gained like 200 300 subscribers out of this probably from bosch and uh, retweeting me and then Xander Hall also posted something about it which mm-hmm. is funny because you know I'm getting all this hate and I've actually gained like 200 followers which is whatever yep. I actually ended up changing my profile picture because I was kind of worried about getting doxxed um, yeah, I removed my um I removed my um uh what's it called my location I, it just says USA now instead of my state and whatever which I think it's just kind of ridiculous because it's like why would you be I un- okay I'm gonna start I understand that people feel uncomfortable around ex-nazis and i understand that completely because ex-nazis hold a lot of terrible opinions they were they held a lot of terrible opinions mm-hmm. but like just treating people the way they treated me in those replies it's just it's crazy to me like they seem insane like they literally think that people should be murdered for their opinions well and like it, i mean it, it's just I, I, I don't bonkers. know how much they're i mean okay so, uh, sorry, uh, real quick. Um, do you mm-hmm. mind? Do you mind telling me, like, approximately, like, uh, like how how old are you? Just, I just wanted to ask. You I'm don't have to 20. tell me if you don't want to. You're twenty. Okay. So. Yep. So yeah, okay. I mean, so you're pretty young. I was like 15, 16 when I fell down the pipeline. Yeah, that's very I got common. Out, I got yeah. out of being a conservative about mm-hmm. a year ago now, but I probably have been de-radicalized for a year and a half, two years. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm very, very happy to hear that you got out of it now. I don't know how much you, I don't know if you've watched my content. I don't know how much you like my content or, or if you have liked it at all or watched it at all. 
But regardless, uh, I grew up in a far right cult. Uh, my father was a crypto Nazi. Um, and uh, so I have a lot of experience with uh, coming from a far right background that I was uh, forced into and uh, and sort of clawing my way out as a trans person. And um, the, I think that a lot of people on the internet, there's a couple of factors that I would say that can maybe help make sense of what's going on. Um, the first thing is that um, a lot of people who don't have that background, they don't really understand how indoctrination works they don't understand how these social pressures work their only experience with like uh racism you know out like not necessarily i mean they may have their own personal experiences but online and societally is individual people being racist to them or them witnessing racist acts or them seeing somebody drop a slur on a on like a like a streamer drop a slur or something along those lines and they usually don't actually understand the mechanics of how people get pulled into these ideologies and mm -hmm. the reality is that most extreme far right ideologies pr deliberately they they deliberately prey on people who are isolated and people who are lonely and they try to pull you in and get you away from other people um l who could challenge you they 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 get you to uh internalize these sort of um they're they're called thought terminating cliches they're basically um certain arguments that that stop you thinking about it like for example one such example from my background is um that there was this idea that uh they would say it was a it was a little saying that they would say which is like having an open mind is like having a fortress with the front door open and that's how they would that's what they would say and this was a a statement that was repeated all the time and said all the time and what it does is it it insulates you against new ideas because you need to have your your mind is supposed to be a fortress for god and having the front door open keeping an open mind is welcoming the devil in now there's all kinds of different versions of that but i'm sure you've probably encountered um mm -hmm. some of that perhaps um yeah i mean like oh sorry go ahead no please go oh it's so like specifically with nazism like a lot of it is about like degeneracy like i remember that like it was kind of like you know how like there's kind of purity testing on the left yeah yeah it's it, it's kind of like that on the right but with like your sexuality like your gender or like um what race of person you sleep with or whatever how like whether you're a virgin or not or i remember like when I, when i left and i still had not a nazi friends on my friends list um i actually had um one of the guys messaged me he's like you fake ass trad thought it was the funniest thing ever looking yeah. back on it but it, it's kind of like they have a lot of purity especially with like women um and i guess technically specifically females um about their sexuality and like whether they're gonna have children or not which mm -hmm. i think is just kind of stupid and also kind of funny looking back on it but um yeah, yeah i mean and that was extremely that was extremely present in like my background obviously like going from fundamentalist christianity purity was mm -hmm. a a was super super reinforced um yeah so something else that i should say is that um people are and this is not to excuse anything this is just to help you know you rationalize some of what's going on and make sense of it and survive it and whatever but uh people usually aren't this intense um we have been you know human hu most of the planet has been in some form of quarantine or reduced social engagement um americans to an extreme degree um for the last year or so people are very very angry and they're very very um a lot of them are lashing out mm -hmm. um, yeah and so and a lot of those people who are lashing out i highly doubt you spent any time checking their um profiles right you probably just saw their comments no i can imagine <laughs> most most of the time i would just like i i have the original tweet muted now because there was it was so much i was just like yeah. i can't can't deal with it just do that but, um, stuff like, I would, right away i yeah. would 
yeah, I would go look at it sometimes to just see what people are saying. A lot of the comments were people like, hey, maybe I'll switch out, but I'd go read some of them, and yeah. I'd be quote retweeted. I just, I blocked probably like 50 people the past few days. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, and don't, I would recommend not hesitating with blocks or mutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, people are very angry, and, and in reality, I would be willing to, to, I would be willing to bet that a lot of those people, um, getting angry at you are, excuse me, probably children, literal children. Um, yeah. there are a lot of literal children on the internet right now. A lot of them are very, uh, they are, they have very simplistic black and white, uh, views of the world. They don't quite, they haven't quite figured out what they believe yet, but they have access to the internet and they can say really mean words, um, that they think will bother you, uh, and can bother you and can be mm -hmm. very scary. But just try to remember that there are like a fuckload of literal children on the internet, um, who have, have basically not. They, they haven't been in school. They've just been sitting in their room running circles, you know, tearing a hole in their carpet, um, you know, for the last year. And, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. And there's a lot of people who simply don't, um, like, who, who, who don't comment because they, they don't really have anything to say besides, like, sending you a like or saying, oh, that's interesting. Uh, but, but an angry teenager who's been trapped inside might want to scream things at you because they have this idea that you're like a still a secret Nazi or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it is difficult. Uh, we, we live in a very strange time and, um, and I don't know, like, I don't know what the answer is. Platforms like Twitter are really, really, really toxic in a lot of ways. Um, obviously I recommend the imps code as a start, but, um, the imps code doesn't help with this type of stuff. It can't. It's yeah. not designed for that. Uh, this is just a, a downside of Twitter. If you get uh, dogpiled on Twitter, it sucks. It really sucks. Um, yeah, I mean... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I have um, personally been doing pretty well. Um, like, if this happened to me, like, a year ago, I would not be doing okay. Like, mentally, I'd be yeah. like, damn, everybody hates me now. This sucks. But I've actually been okay like i've gotten a lot of support like i'm active in Bosch's community so people have been really supportive there they've been like hey like a... you're a better person now there's nothing you can do about your past you were a minor like you're chill yeah but, like it gets me it gets me a little bit because it's just like really and like one of my one of my biggest concerns is just how this looks to people who are looking or might de radicalize because i mm. i feel concerned that like a lot of people might be like hey, you know, I was kind of wrong about my opinions. Maybe I can find a home somewhere else and have better opinions and views on the world. And then they see stuff like that, like people dogpiling me and saying I should die and whatever, mm -hmm. which is why I think Twitter also hurts discourse and you yeah. could get into that. But like, uh, I, I, I will, I, just, I intend to talk about that a bit more. Yeah. I've talked about it a hundred times, but guess what, imps, mm -hmm. you can keep hearing me talk about it because I'm going to talk about it until the end of time. Um, I'm, just, Twitter, I'm just worried sorry i'm just worried about how this affects leftism and affects the movement overall thank you because i feel like i feel like if doesn't. i'd been treated i feel like if i'd been treated like this a year ago mm -hmm. i might not be a leftist today which which is terrible and i hate thinking that but like if i'd been treated like that by people and i hadn't been welcomed with open arms in the community i don't know what i would have done because i i was still not mentally like a hundred percent there with politics i was fresh out of conservatism and i mm -hmm. didn't really i wasn't really concrete like i am now if this happened a year ago i might not be a leftist but i'm, I'm concrete now in what i believe and i know good. that i'm a better person now so it doesn't bother me too much in that aspect but i just worried about um like um new rehabilitated fascists and neo-nazis coming out and seeing this yeah i mean the the good news is is that they're probably like even though it can seem very overwhelming and and terrible uh for for you because it's a lot of it is a lot of people focused on you in reality it doesn't represent the broader left or even the uh or even the broader populace most mm -hmm. people don't follow lefties on twitter they follow their own interesting things i do agree that there are um potential problems um, you know, I, I think that this is, I think it's a terrible approach. Um, 
but I also think that like this type of a that type of attitude in my experience is actually like not very common um, and tends to be mm -hmm. isolated to sort of um, certain cliques on the internet. Um, like Twitter? <laughs> yeah, well, and Twitter is a very cliquish site. There's a lot of people who are sort of established on Twitter, and those people, uh, you know, they ride around in, in their little groups, and they see people get retweeted, and they say they're edgy bullshit, and that's that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not really like that elsewhere. I mean, um, you know, if, if you hang out in, in my community, you're not, you're going to find something similar to, uh, Vosh's. You're not, you're going to find that in most community. Well, maybe not all, but many communities are, are very, yeah. very welcome to that sort of thing. Um, because they have an understanding that h humans are flawed and that this is, um, you know, that like right wing ideologies are, in, are, are indoctr in, in, they, they, they use indoctrination wildly. So, and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, I I wouldn't let it get to you uh, as best as you can. Obviously, it's impossible to to not let something like that get to you. Uh, like, um, I I know like I, people were calling me last like last month. People were calling me a tanky. They were saying I'm a transphobe, which is very very frustrating. Wait, yeah. a transphobe? That doesn't make long no story. sense. Uh, you'll have to. Uh. You can you can you can ask people in the community about that. They'll tell you the story. I don't I don't want okay, to I'll, rehash I'll that around. drama. <laughs> last month last month was a drama month of me getting canceled. Uh, you know, there's. I mean, Vosh gets yeah. canceled every day. It feels like. So. Yeah, that's weird how that works out. Yeah. Um. Just so you know. Uh. By the way. Um. Uh, just just so you know. Um. Like I came out of Vosh's community. Like mm -hmm. like so and and Vosh was arguably the person who who got me into streaming i mean obviously i got myself into streaming but like i i went to a meetup and i met vosh and i was like hey uh what do you think about me streaming da, 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 da. and then he said yeah you should go for it and i said all right i'm gonna do it then and i did it oh man um, you met vosh that's awesome yeah yeah i met i met vosh and um and multiple times actually we live quite you know relatively close to each other we live in oh the same yeah i mean i guess you're States. both in seattle right yeah we're in the seattle area yeah and awesome. um Super, super cool. Um, Vosh is big, but I am as big as... Well, Vosh is thicker than I am, but I am as <laughs> tall as Vosh. I'm a giant. You forget. You all forget I am a literal giant. I am huge. I'm very I'm tall. I'm very short. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Fawn, Fawn my, my partner, got beer and pizza. It was great. It was super cool. Vosh was, was super cool. And we got, to, we got, the, we got the, the super treat, which was we got to see the Sonic review live vosh gave us his sonic review live before he even gave it to the channel it was super cool so um, i don't think i've watched that video oh it's good it's a good one i mean if you care about sonic um i had fun not really <laughs> um but uh yeah that was cool and and you know I, I i do look forward to stuff like meetups and whatever being able to happen but um with regard to like online de-radicalization and stuff like that um there, i have a lot of thoughts on these sort of things um I think it's really awesome when content creators like Vosh, um, like, like, uh, like even ContraPoints and, and other people can offer meaningful information that can help people get themselves out of, uh, it, you know, extreme situations or, or indoctrination. For me, uh, there was a combination of factors. And with regard to myself becoming more left, like Vosh was hugely influential on that. Absolutely. Like, and so was Chapo. So was, uh, you know, the, the, the majority report, Michael Brooks, mm -hmm. these people were very influential on me. And at the end of the day, something that a lot of people don't understand is how we have to sort of deconstruct the things that we're taught and the things that were, um, given. Um, by the way, thank you for the sub, uh, major typo. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah, we have, there's a lot of how we come to our ideas, how we, uh, how we formulate our ideas is not so simple as just have the right ideas, five head. Um, yeah. and, and I really wish that people would move away from that sort of essentialist understanding. Um, but it's very hard for me to gauge like how broad of a problem this is like outside of Twitter. Like, honestly, uh, Twitter is a mess and again people will will share things hoping that it will be useful to the people that they that, that follow them and it ends up getting blown up into something 
nonsense and it's almost completely unpredictable it's just just mess. yeah just yeah that mess. was it was crazy it blew up i, I kind of woke up and i was like I'm like, why do I have so many notifications on Twitter? I might get, like, two a day, maybe, usually. I'm like, I have, like, 200, and I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I wanted to touch on one thing you said really quickly. I don't think a lot, uh, some leftists, like, especially one, the ones that are online all the time, mm -hmm. I don't think that they realize that, specifically for, like, white rural people, mm -hmm. a lot of them are, are just raised with general racism, with general homophobia and transphobia. Right. And yeah. I think it's I think it's almost dangerous to I know these are the kind of fringe people to not accept people who've had these ideas because so many people have them in America just because of our culture and our power structure and the institutions that be. Well, like, yeah, I mean, people lo a lot of people don't know anything about how uh, the again, these ideas actually disseminate in our society um, mm -hmm. in a lot of rural areas the only community that people have might be a extremist christian group it might be a a you know a bunch of racist family members and you may have no uh, uh no choice in that whatsoever um thank you very much for that prime i appreciate that um and it, it's it's uh, it's very difficult to try and teach people that. I just wish that people would... That is why I say all the time on my show that I really want people to come to understand indoctrination, that I want them to come to understand how um, the right proliferates certain ideas, specifically the extreme ideas. Um, it's... Uh, it is it is difficult and it is frustrating. And I really it's complicated. Hope, yeah, and I, I really hope that the mentality that we see in this sort of like cancellation bullshit um like doesn't stick. Um I really hope it doesn't. Like uh and on one hand, I, I agree with people um who say that uh like like one of the main things that, that like people people talk about when you're de-radicalizing when you're working in that area is that a lot of people aren't going to accept it and you and it is true that like no one is entitled to well first of all any attention or or any response from anyone like we are all individuals at the end of the day but we all but mm -hmm. i think we can also acknowledge that um that like it is better if we can learn how to we can we can defuse some of the tactics that the that the right uses by proving that um it isn't true that if you're once part of some sort of extremist group um that you're never going to be able to be you know be associated with uh with anyone or that you're not going to be able to have friends or that you're going to be forever um you know um ostracized or or whatever because that is very con that is very commonly taught i mean one of, I was recently um, I, I've been talking about this on my stream. I'm I'm planning and working on a uh, a special project, which is going to be called the Demon Mama Spiritual Deconstruction. I'm I'm going back and I'm finding my old journals and I'm going to talk about how I got out of Christianity, the experience I had with Christianity, what it meant to me, the things I believed, et cetera, et cetera, and bring it up to the modern day so that people can have an understanding of what that path is like. And mm -hmm. In that, I found a letter that was uh, written to my parents that I wrote to my parents 10 years ago, um, which was um, very, very intense to read. But one of the things that I uh, found was there was this thing that I hadn't even thought of in years where I didn't even re I hadn't even remembered how my one of the main things my parents used to say to me was if you continue down this path all that you will have is like you will you will only have friends who are gay and trans if you continue down this path you're going to live you're going to have to live in like an enclave because nobody else will accept you which is absurd right but that is what they tell you they and and yeah. and with nothing else to work on with no other evidence and without understanding what that's like right like that's a bad thing but they are framing it like a bad thing they're saying like you're going to have to go live in this um in this 
like this idea of like a, a queer ghetto or something and oh thank you so much uh chicha chachi i appreciate that um and it is it is actually interestingly true a lot of my friends are trans these days a lot of like a lot of my friends are gay these days but it doesn't really matter it's obviously wonderful but at the time um that like i found myself trying to grapple with that and it's very hard because when you are when you grew up around all of that and that's all that you have and you're isolated it's very hard to make to, to respond to that and yeah. it is something that these right wing that right wing adherents believe and they weaponize yeah yeah definitely i remember like when i was starting to leave i was kind of like am i gonna, even gonna have any like people who want to talk to me any friends because at that point i literally had nobody from school like i mean i had just been out of high school basically yeah. i had nobody from high school i wasn't in college yet and it was like it was almost miserable because i'm like you know i'm leaving this space and it was like pretty tightly knit to like we all knew each other and we were all in the same Facebook groups mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And it was like, it was pretty tightly knit. And I had, I ran a Tumblr too that ironically, some people actually recognized me from my old Tumblr, which is really yeah. embarrassing, but it's okay, I guess. Yeah, um, I mean, that's, that is, it that's was one like of really the downsides of the internet era, right? Is that? Yeah. yeah. They were all cool though. One of them messaged me and they're like, Hey, I remember you. You're like cool now. Awesome. It's good. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it was, I remember like thinking that and being like, man, am I even going to have friends now? Well, and I, I, I obviously do. do have friends and I'm fine. So yeah, thankful. I, mean... I have an amazing partner too, who um, I actually had to kind of move to the left too, because they were conservative also because of their parents raising them as conservative. Wow. Shocker. Yeah. Um, but that was a little rift in our relationship. Conservatives. Yeah. Usually yeah. people and become that... conservatives because they're raised by conservatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people in like the comment section were like, I remember, I think, I don't know if they were being ironic, but somebody's like, I've been a communist since I was 12. Or people are like, well, I was never racist and I was never this. I'm like, yeah, but your experience isn't the same as everybody else's experience. Yeah. Like, it's not 100% that your parents are conservatives, so therefore you will be conservative. But really high correlation and children have no moral agency, really, or any understanding of the real world. Yeah. And you can't, you can't expect children to understand everything. And it kind of feels victim blamey. When it gets to that point, because I feel like you don't treat other people who are victims of things that way normally. No, they, they, they but that's the thing. I mean, people don't like really think about that at all. They don't they don't really care. They're just looking. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just looking for somebody to vent their anger on. And I find like for me, uh, one thing that I grappled with that was very difficult was overcoming my own internalized transphobia that mm -hmm. I had to, it was incredibly painful, incredibly difficult, like uh, overcoming that that was arguably the first step that I had to overcome because I mean, being trans and growing up in an environment that's distinctly anti-trans um, is- Yeah, that has you, to be so hard. It's, it's, it was nearly impossible and, and it was devastating to my mental health for a very long time. And certain aspects of that will always haunt you. Like, I mean, I, I, I literally, de I literally at one point threw away my hormones because I, I, I was falling back into this idea that I was going to be alone, that it was that I had made some terrible mistake, that I was a, like, I had been just mistaken and all of this stuff, like everybody around me was telling me this one way to live and, and that I, how could I be right when I can't even find anybody else who agrees with me around me. And um yeah it's really it's really fucking hard and people don't uh like people don't under people don't understand that and they don't have any uh, empathy for it and like yeah. i think one thing that people tend to do is they tend to think that everybody who has ever had problematic beliefs or who has ever uh you know repeated or or even uh advocated for problematic beliefs um or even downright fucking horrible beliefs like that they like were a complete and 100 percent conscious agent with like a like a, a spread yeah. of all possible beliefs in front of them and they're just like i choose to be the bad one or they try to act like they're somebody like a ben shapiro who's like actively constantly churning this shit out is deeply ingrained in it and and understands the full extent of of mm -hmm. what they're advocating and, it, and it's that's not the case 
No, definitely not. I know I definitely didn't understand that when I was younger. Like, it kind of started out as memeing, like just of course, yeah. joking. Yeah, like that's literally how it started. And, you know, when you start from there and you just keep joking about it, you just kind of fall down that hole. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just I just wish people had more empathy for it. And I understand why, again, I already said this, I understand not being comfortable around me. I'm not asking people to be my friend. I'm not asking people to be like, oh, you're the best person ever now. I just want people to understand my side of things and to understand my experiences and your experiences. Yeah. And in my opinion, I believe that our experience being radicalized and then de-radicalized and then moving towards the left and becoming socialist, I think it has utility for the movement. Of Honestly. course. I mean, I, like, I, I, I think, think it, I think it absolutely does. Like, uh, the the, I, I mean, again, part of the thing is like, I, I don't feel the need like anymore. Uh, to I don't care. Like, people can say whatever the fuck they want to me. If people aren't, if people don't like me, if people want to say etc. Whatever, then fuck them. That's their choice. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. I don't really give a shit. Like, okay. Uh, I have you know plenty of people who do associate with me. If, if some random person doesn't think I've you know, I, I, I wasn't a, a five-year-old, uh, uh, you know, Stalinist or whatever, then okay. Yeah. Um, like, uh, okay, uh, whatever. There's a lot of people who don't like me. A lot of people think that, that I'm shit or whatever. Um, that's fine. I don't care. I just, it doesn't bother me. I don't really care. Um, but, um, at the same time, like, uh, pe we would be remiss as a movement to ignore people who have the most, uh, the most primary exposure to uh this to the to the things that we're fighting like yeah like i i didn't leave uh i didn't leave religion for the left like i didn't leave it in the name of the left of the of like some leftist movement i left because it was torturing me because i was miserable and i wanted yeah i wanted to die every single day and i hated myself and i didn't understand it i was seeking truth i was seeking something better um and i found that and it just so happens that that path led me to the left and i think that the left like that leftism as a political movement is very very good at liberating people but it's not like leaving the like i was like no i must leave my church in the name of the left no, yeah, was, no. i was just desperately trying to find a way to survive to not be psychologically tortured by the ideology that was deeply exploitative and and manipulative and i think that a lot of lefties just don't get that and maybe that's a sign that like in some ways um we're making progress less people are having that firsthand experience with the indoctrination um and that's a great thing i long for a world where nobody has to experience um any of that shit i agree but while while we're here i think it would be good for people to understand that like uh you don't have a workable movement if people are if you are basically advocating for anyone who was ever less left than you doesn't talk or gets threatened to death like yeah that's terrible yeah. it's it's really dangerous and it I just don't want it to kill the movement. Not that it literally will. Obviously, my feelings on it are kind of overplayed because of what I've been experiencing. But, oh. I mean, I've kind of noticed it, like, even before this drama a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's also Twitter. Yeah. But Twitter yeah. is terrible. And it is yeah, miserable. I hate and it. <laughs> if I could give you, uh, you know, personal advice uh, about Twitter, it is when you – if you start to see an uptick in, in, in uh, you know, haters, just click that protected switch. Just whoop, whoop, just just lock them out. Nobody. Yeah, nobody, I should have done that. Yeah, and 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 try to push yourself to actually mute shit. You don't need to see it. I like had to stop myself from going and and name searching during my drama cycle because if I had done that, I would have been dooming out. It would have gotten to me. It it really is like you have to just go. Nope. Like I don't care. Uh, the thing about the internet, the thing about Twitter, is that it puts you in contact with. Uh, uh, a potentially infinite amount of people, none of whom have any relevance to you whatsoever for most of your life. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just don't don't hesitate to use that block button. And and remember that like, uh, regardless of what I say, regardless of what Vosh says, regardless of what any stupid asshole on the internet says, regardless of what what any community tells you, 
um, at the end of the day, you're, you have to seek truth in your own way. You have to like actually go and seek that truth. And that means sometimes, sometimes the path of, of truth does mean going against some hostility. Um, I mean, I'm trans. I experienced hostility, explicit hostility from the community that had been like n through no choice of my own, my home for my entire life. My family literally disowned me for, for continuing on this, like on this road that they, that they wanted and you, you, or that they didn't want for me, but it was, I could not have lived. I can't even imagine what my life would be like if I hadn't gone through with transition, transition, if I hadn't pursued my genuine self-expression and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that is more important than what even a thousand dumb shits on on Twitter have to say. Even if yeah. they, even if you feel like, well, why, how can they say that? Well, people can be wrong. A lot of people can be wrong. And um, yeah, just remember that that's more important. And it's more important than what me or any other content creator what whatsoever like never let a single figure or a single community determine like dissuade you from truth seeking dissuade you from self enlightenment and maybe this is my anarchy my anarchy side speaking but i genuinely believe that that individuals and communities can reach self enlightenment that they can that they can grow and come to realize things about their world and come to conclusions through participating in the world with a critical lens through, you know, thinking about things and processing them. So, yeah. 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 But, um, just know that like, you know, we, I, so another thing I wanted to say is, and this goes out to everyone in the chat, which is you are not obligated to confess to anything ever on social media. Uh, if you have something in your past that you are like that was your problem something that you believed or whatever no you never have to tell anybody that now i choose to because i want to talk about that i believe that i can bring value by talking about the experience i had growing up in an extremist cult but nobody um ha you you are obligated to no one to um to to, to divulge your past or whatever things that you might have dealt with no one you are not owed that and in fact, uh, on places like Twitter, I generally advise people not to talk about that stuff. Talk about yeah, these I things my with your friend. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, not that there. I do. I talk about things publicly. But then again, I'm also a public figure, and this is my yep. living. So I am getting something for it, and I and I am pushing. I am using it as an instrument to better the world. Um, yeah, you're, I mean, you're only really, yeah, exactly. Like Frucola says, you're only really obligated to apologize or make things right with those that you hurt and nobody else. No one mm -hmm. else gets to determine your, uh, moral standing, your, your validity or anything like that. And you don't owe it to them. So, and that goes again, that's not, obviously, you know that at this point, but that goes out to everybody out there. Um, people online, there is a, a lot of inherent parasociality online that people think they're entitled to everything that you've ever done to having your entire history, despite them not offering up that same thing. Um, anybody who tells you that they're the most perfect person who's never made a mistake in their life is lying. There's and no way. <laughs> they are lying. There is, there is humans are, are disgusting, filthy creatures that are mean to one another everyone's been mean to a sibling or a friend at some point in their life they might have even said something really bad i mean i remember when i was a kid i got in a fight with a friend and i said some really mean shit to that friend and i occasionally i'll remember it and i go oh wow i was an asshole but guess what that's my problem and my friend's problem every single human is an imperfect uh primate and we all have to learn and we all have to recognize that like yeah it's it's okay for us to discourage active um you know active uh bad behavior but and and it's also okay for people to have lack of trust for people who've done great harm but believing yep. but having believed something problematically in the past is not inherently great harm so yeah yeah i agree 100 percent. 
Yeah. Well, I, I hope that the, the heat on Twitter cools down and I appreciate you being, you. being willing to come on here and talk with us. I hope you know that, um, that like, uh, you can always, you can always find people to talk to here in this community. A lot of people with a similar background, we don't, uh, you know, we don't have, uh, a, we, we don't encourage the, the type of behavior that you've been subjected to in this community whatsoever. Um, Though we do come down very hard on on active Nazism, obviously. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna drive someone out who is is bettering themselves. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate um, it a lot, actually. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, and yeah, just know that you've got at least another community here. I know Vosh's community is is really good for that, and uh, and um, I'm very happy that there has there is a lot of positive things happening. And I just want people to know one thing I always want to drive home is that this is why I advocate for a growth of the online left for an, for a, um, a, a, an expand, a further expansion of what opportunities lie online, um, and beyond, um, for people to, 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 find those cracks because the reality is that a lot of this right-wing stuff is just is about creating a shell of indoctrination around someone's mind and it's very difficult to find something that cracks it and there's no consistency there for me what cracked the shell of my indoctrination was first in like literally personal dissidents or, or uh with the church from my own study of the bible the first step to me not becoming a christian was studying the bible better than other christians <laughs> And I feel like th that's really common with ex Christians it is, <laughs> for it is, some yeah. reason. <laughs> it, it is. It's because there's a lot of internal inconsistencies. But that was the first step. And the second step was meeting a friend who just liked to argue and argued with me a whole bunch. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I think good faith yeah. arguments are really, really important. Yeah. But I mean, there's also that there is a thing that, like, not everyone is able to engage like i was my oh, friend yeah. liked debate and and like i was annoying as fuck when i was a christian i know looking back like i was super annoying i had all these memorized theological arguments that were full of shit um and that's not that might not even work for everyone i know there are family members of mine who you could debate them all day and they don't care i've tried i've literally had hours of conversations with certain family members and they're more extreme than they ever have been everybody's different and that's why i hope that our diversity of tactics will lead to people being able to free themselves from the, the chains of their former ideologies so yeah um thank you so much for coming on and uh if you yeah. have any last memes that you want to drop to the chat i know chat's been really enjoying this conversation trans fucking rights and trans thriving yes yes that's the important part Thank you for having me on so much. I super appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And we're happy to have you here. So thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Wow. That was a pog ass conversation. Damn. That was a pog ass conversation.